دوستان گرامی دوستان گرامی سیاست ما مشات دولت های غرب سبب شد که آخوندها و دولت دستشان به آنها در عراق انواع محدودیت های ضد انسانی را علیه مجاهدین در کمپ لیبرتی و اشرف اعمال کنند به طوری که حداقل استانداردهای های حقوق بشری و انسان دوستانه از آنها سلب شده است شرایط یک زندان به آنها تحمیل شده است در حالی که آنها افراد حفاظت شده بر طبق کنوانسیون چار جنف و به تصریح کمیساری های عالی پناهندگان پناهجویان برخوردار از حفاظت های بین المللی هستند بنابراین باید بپرسیم که چرا آمریکا و اتحادی اروپا و به خصوص ملل متحد تا کنون خواستار آن نشدند که این کم از موقعیت پناهندگی برخوردار شود و چرا از نفوذشان برای توقف آزارها و سرکوبگری های دولت عراق استفاده نمی کنند چرا در مقابل قارتگری اموال مجاهدین در اشرف و لیبرتی توسط دولت عراق سکوت کردند و متاسفانه نه تنها سازمان ملل نقش تسهیل کننده خود را ندارد بلکه به عکس عملا در میز عراق و علیه مجاهدین عمل می کند من اینجا از دبیر کل ملل متحد می خواهم که به این شرایط غیر قابل قبول رسیدگی کرده و آن را خاتمه دهد و الا یک رسوایی بزرگ در راه است این سکوت، این انفعال، این تندادن به تحمیلات و مطامع فاشیزم دینی و وابستگان عراقیش همه از آثار سیاست مماشات و حفظ رژیم است و این سیاستی است که باید تغییر کند We understand first and foremost we must we must ensure the safety and the dignity and the decency of the residents of Camp Liberty and that means that means getting liberty classified as a refugee camp to finance their just living conditions they have to be able to sell the property that remains at Ashraf that's simple and just and fair and the Iraqi government with an assist from the UN has put every roadblock possible in the way of fair disposition of that property we have to take it on our shoulders to ensure that the UN and the US get the message to the Iraqis that there must be a fair disposition of that property. It is absolutely essential. Ambassador Kobor must live up to the promise that he made to me directly, to my colleagues directly, when we all met. He gave us his word that the property of the people at Ashraf would be sold, that it would be done fairly and it would be done properly. And so far, he has reneged on that promise. He has not lived up to that promise. And we are going to continue to dog him until he does. You don't get away with breaking promises, not to us. We will make sure that he keeps that promise. Of one essence is the human race. And if we act with firmness in the right, we will see Mrs. Rajavi in the United States and we will see all of you in a free Tehran. Thank you very much. It's time for them to act, and I say to Ambassador Kobler, who've many conversations with many of us, you told me on several occasions, Mr. Ambassador, that the biggest obstacle to you doing your work, to fulfilling the commitment you made to the residents and your mission as a representative of the United Nations, the largest, most single important obstacle was the delisting of the MEK. Ambassador Kobler, they've been delisted. It's time for you to do your job, help them sell their property, designate the camp as a refugee camp, and move resettlement out the door. The UN has done itself grave damage by allowing Martin Kubler to supplant the work of the UN High Commissioner for Refugees. This is damage to the High Commissioner that will reverberate through the years. The whole point of the High Commissioner is to be separate from national concerns, to, to take out of 
domestic politics refugee issues, to process refugees to the country of final asylum quickly. And the interposition of Martin Kubler has prevented that. That's why I think the Secretary General who oversees the entire UN system uh, needs to take this in hand, and the sooner the better. It's time for Iraq and the United Nations to finally recognize the people of Ashraf and Liberty as human beings. And I want to join my colleagues in pleading with the Secretary General of the United Nations to remove Martin Kobler as the ambassador in charge of Liberty and Ashraf. Martin Kobler. Martin Kobler has been complicit in the harassment and persecution and terrorizing of the people of Ashraf and Liberty, and he continues to this day. Imagine a member of the United Nations getting in the middle of a business transaction between the people of Ashraf and a business agent who's trying to resolve the settlement of their personal assets and only to be obstructed by the UN commissioner in charge of the resettlement of the people of Ashraf, Martin Kobler, what are you thinking? How could you be on the side of resettling the people of Ashraf and Liberty and yet be hindering the opportunity to let these people move on with their lives and find safe places where they can reside around the world? Martin Kobler, you must step down. We, we have been uh, all during these uh, months, we have been witnessing um, how uh, Ambassador Kobler has handled the situation. Now it's the time to demand justice, and Mr. Kobler will have to step down. That the United States needs to use its leverage with Iraq to ensure that the residents of Liberty have firm guarantees for their safety and security. Any harm to the residents of Camp Liberty would tarnish and dishonor America's reputation. It would also tarnish and dishonor the UN's reputation. We need to convince the UNHCR to recognize Camp Liberty as a refugee camp, which will help ensure that the residents will be safe until the day they can leave Iraq. The people of Camp Liberty are not free, and they will not be free until they are accorded the rights of other human beings and until the United Nations does not recognize their rights as refugees. أما أنتم مجاهدي خلق فقد جعلتم من أنفسكم ومن أفكاركم النبيلة جسرا لكي يعبر الشعب الإيراني من خلاله إلى الديمقراطية الحديثة. ودعمكم لثورة شعبنا في سوريا وموقفكم هذا إنما يدل على حكمتكم وبعد نظركم في تقدير الأمور حيث أن أسقاط نظام الأسد نظام الإجرام والإفساد في سوريا هو المقتل الرئيسي وبداية النهاية لنظام الملالي في إيران Martin Kobler watches knowingly without so much as speaking up as the agreements he helped make to do the relocation are disregarded by the Iraqis and the resident, residents are systematically stripped of their property but never their dignity. <laughs> Mr. Kobler, I hope you're watching. 
because you've shown your colors to this soldier and everyone else that's seen what you're doing there. You have been no help to anyone other than the Mullah's regime. To Ambassador Kobla, I state, Blessing every inhumane act by the Maliki government is wrong. Presenting liberty as a humane environment while covering up the true conditions is despicable. Sitting idle while agreements are ignored is unforgivable. Our combined effort now is to ensure the U.S. and the U.N. keep the pressure on Iraq to protect the people in Liberty and Ashraf. They must have the ability to sell their property, to fund their lives as they exist in Iraq until they can be moved or relocated to other countries. Iraq and the U.N. must recognize liberty as a refugee camp. As you said, Madam Rajivi, earlier, that the future of world peace lies in being able to provide for an important role for regime change and allowance for a constructive role by the PMOI MEK in that. So with this, the future, the future is yours. And now uh, I wish you all the very best of luck. The Iranian regime pays attention to the Mujahideen 350% more than all other opposition groups combined during 2005. The regime pays attention. If the regime pays attention, then so should we pay attention to the Mujahideen. The labor of these many years in Ashraf has produced millions of dollars worth of property and the MEK has contracted with a company in Britain to buy this property for a fair price. Let me speak clearly to the government of Iraq. You underestimated our will with the FTO. You underestimate us again. You will not steal our property. You will not take our possessions. You will not bankrupt our people. We will not forget. We will not go away. We will get fair justice for this property.